Rural Northamptonshire. Not spectacular, just very pleasant, here on a bright April day. In fact, I'm standing on top of one of the greatest engineering feats of the 19th century. The Kilsby Railway Tunnel, opened in 1838. On opening, it was the longest railway tunnel in the world. Think of it, 1838, Queen Victoria had only been crowned one year before. Designed by Robert Stevenson, the tunnel opened only nine years after his father's famous locomotive, the Rocket, had proved that locomotives would be more efficient than stationary steam engines for pulling trains. There's one of the ventilation shafts from the tunnel, which still serves one of the busiest railway lines in Britain. That's a buzzard you can hear calling. It's sat in a nearby tree. And there's my biker's cafe, complete with sandwiches in the carrier bag and coffee in the flask. Anyway, it's time to pack away the picnic and move on to the main object of my ride out, the village of gunpowder plotters and more. Those raised curbstones on the left and that metal fence must be there to offer some sort of protection to the southern entrance to the railway tunnel which is nearby. I love riding these quiet country lanes, the type of road on which this Royal Enfield excels with its low revving, low compression, long stroke engine just chugging away, able to pull even the lowest speeds on this type of road in its highest gear. It all makes for a very satisfying way to travel around when seeking out the historic, the unusual and the quirky points of interest from the English landscape. There on the left is the sign that tells me I'm entering the village of Ashby St Ledgers. And that's the manor house on the left. I'll take a look later. There's the main gate. I'll park up here and take a look around. timbered chamber above the entry gateway to the manor courtyard in which the gunpowder plot of the 5th of November 1605 was hatched under the leadership of Robert Catesby, the lord of the manor here. The chamber became known as the plotter's room and the conspirators stored gunpowder and ammunition nearby. Let's take a look over the wall from the plotter's room to see the church that was, just a few years before the gun, gunpowder plot, before the Reformation, a Roman Catholic church. 
This, of course, was the situation that Catesby and others wanted to restore by blowing up King James I and Parliament with him. The church as we see it, it's a 14th to 15th century building, so it is as it would have been when Robert Catesby lived here. Let's take a look inside. And immediately I'm struck by the wall painting opposite. Before the Reformation, these walls would have glowed with brightly coloured paintings. What we see opposite was revealed from under the reformers' whitewash when the church was restored in 1929. The uncovered wall paintings stand for the type of religious practice that Catesby wanted to restore. In its customary position opposite the south door is this 15th century painting of St Christopher. Many pre-Reformation churches had a St Christopher painting in always this exact same position opposite the door so that passing travellers could see. St Christopher of course is the patron saint, saint of travellers. There's a three-decker pulpit on the left from the 17th century. I'm sorry the video doesn't do it justice. But look straight ahead and see the magnificent rood screen. Often these were torn down after the Reformation. This one has survived intact. And in the chancel, just look at those finely sculptured memorials to the local gentry there on the wall. Just backing out now through the rood screen and revealed medieval wall paintings can be seen just above the chancel arch. The detail cannot be seen but they are depictions of Christ's passion and crucifixion. Just there up on the right of the arch the dark red lines serve to divide the individual scenes. I'm not sure what that is could be something obvious that I'm missing, perhaps it's a coat of arms, but around the edge of the arches you'll see a red line, a decorative line, giving an impression of the colour with which this church would have glistened before the walls were whitewashed in the Reformation. Again, something else that I can't make out. What I can make out, however, here at the west end of the church is a representation of Death, who holds a spade and a pick. This is a 16th century commemoration of the Black Death. And having just spoken about the Black Death, outside the churchyard is curiously devoid of gravestones. I don't know the reason for this, perhaps I'll have to do some further research. And there is the manor house, just over the wall from the church. Just walking to the west end of the church you get another view of the timber framed plotter's room. Ashby St Ledger's was the command centre during the planning of the gunpowder plot the famous plot in which Guy Fawkes would try but fail to ignite the gunpowder to blow up the Houses of Parliament. In this room above the gatehouse with its privacy from the main house and clear view of the surrounding area, Robert Catesby, his servant Thomas Bates and other conspirators planned the gunpowder plot. Catesby was killed after the plot failed with some other plotters at Holbeach House whereas his servant was executed in the following January. As you leave the main door of the church you see, and are intended to see, given its position opposite, a memorial by the famous architect Sir Edwin Lutyens to the second Lord Winborn, who died in 1939. It is a tall, tapering, abstracted cross, emphasised by the use of steps dropping down to it. 
Equally abstracted is the sarcophagus standing adjacent to it. It's a fine late work by Lutyens. The second Lord Winborn was a patron of Lutyens, who was employed to make alterations to the nearby manor house. There's the church entrance directly opposite the, mem the memorial. Let's take a look at that manor house. There was an original medieval building here, which the Catesbys remodelled in Tudor style. In the 19th century, it was expanded in what was known as Jacobean Revival style. And since the Catesbys, the manor house has passed through a series of owners. In 1903, it was sold to someone called Ivor Guest, the first Viscount Wimborne, who had previously rented it for hunting. It was during the ownership of his son, the second Viscount, that Sir Edwin Lutyens extensively remodelled the manor house working on it for 40 years, the longest commission of his career, whilst also carrying out other commissions in the village. Here is the main gate, with the manor house down there at the end of the drive. And opposite the main gate, there is this long avenue of trees leading from another gate which you might just be able to see in the distance. Back to the bike now and a ride through the remainder of the village. There's a mixture of buildings in this village, some ancient and some not so ancient. Hello. Cheery hello there, was that the church warden or even the vicar? lovely stone buildings. This part of Northamptonshire is on the same stone belt as the Cotswolds. It has the same geology. On the right coming up is a row of thatched terraced cottages by Sir Edwin Lutyens in ultra arts and crafts style. There are the cottages. If I'd had time, perhaps I could have uh, given them more attention on the video. But for now it's time to leave the village for the countryside beyond. For now I'm done.